everyone. How are you? Thank you for having us this morning. Good morning. And today they're able to recover and hopefully in a few days uh, leave hospital. But we also know that for many people like Liz and John, who've been born with congenital heart conditions, that research will help them and others like them have a better quality of life and save their lives. In both those circumstances, uh, they can tell you for themselves, but uh, the work that has been done to, to save their lives and give them a great quality of life cannot be underestimated. This is a record boost to medical research in New South Wales. Heart disease is a killer of too many people and this funding will go a long way to make sure the best minds in heart disease are able to have that research money to be able to continue their fantastic work. And we know that the breakthroughs they're making here in New South Wales will help people all over the world but also allow them to collaborate with the best minds in the world to make sure we continue to save lives. I want to see fewer Australians die from heart disease and I want to make sure that New South Wales Government is doing everything we can to crack those codes and prevent death and bad quality of life uh, that is a result of heart disease. Um, as the uh, Minister for Health and also Medical Research, um, the message is being given to me loud and clear by researchers and clinicians that uh, we have people today who are alive because of research in the past, but there are still far too many people passing away from cardiovascular disease. About four and a half million people in Australia currently suffer from cardiovascular disease. And so this, this money will make a huge difference because this uh, money will ensure that our very best and our brightest, our researchers, come to Australia, stay in Australia and continue the commitment to ensuring that our patients will have even better treatments in the future. Today, uh, the Premier and the Treasurer and I have had the pleasure of meeting two patients, both of whom uh, had heart attacks just yesterday, and both of them are up and talking. Uh, and they're talking because they have had the benefit of research that's occurred in the past, but there's so much more that we can do, and this money guarantees that going into the next decade, New South Wales will lead Australia in terms of cardiovascular research. And I, uh, Treasurer. Well, this represents the largest ever investment in medical research to fight heart disease in our state's history. Um, importantly, this will have a significant effect, not just on those uh, suffering from heart disease today, but importantly, as part of this budget, a focus on future... Um, importantly, this will have a significant effect, not just on those uh, suffering from heart disease today, but importantly, as part of this budget, a focus on future generations and making sure that research sets us up for the future. Research to as a primary says, in our um, states, one history. person every 12 minutes dies uh, from heart disease in Australia. Um, it's really important um, that we not only focus on those, uh, on, on those um, who are currently um, in care, but also on, in the future. Um, as part of this investment today, um, it's not just a short-term investment, it's a long-term investment. $150 million over the next 10 years. Uh, that ensures that we can take a bright idea, take it through to fruition and make a real difference. Importantly, we can't make uh, these investments that we're making today uh, without being in a strong financial position. The work we've taken over the last seven years ensures that investments in medical research that we're making today uh, become a reality. Thank you. Questions? Premier, the, the importance of having the funding uh, regular and expected over the next 10 years, how, how important is that? The funding certainty allows people to invest in our researchers. It allows people to have a medium and long-term view on making sure that uh, researchers get all the resources they need to be able to do the great work they need. Uh, we're hoping, of course, that during the next decade there'll be significant breakthroughs, especially in relation to genetics and what causes defects at birth, but also how to mitigate and improve quality of life for those people who have to live with heart disease. This is a, an incredible amount of money for a very important cause. And we know that uh, prevention, of course, not only saves lives, but it also means a greater quality of life. And this is a record investment. We wouldn't have been able to make it had the budget not been in a strong position. But I'm incredibly proud uh, to lead a government that knows what its priorities are, saving lives, improving health outcomes, and reducing the incidence of mortality, a death every 12 minutes, the amount of time we've stood here today at this press conference. Unfortunately, at least one person would have died from heart disease. And we want to reduce uh, those numbers and, of course, provide better quality of life. And uh, in the case of Liz, she was telling me how half her family has, a, has this gene, which means uh, she has a defibrillator uh, and a number of her relatives will have to have that uh, the next generation and beyond. And 
And this type of research money will help people like Liz and her family. And unfortunately, Liz uh, lost her brother to the same condition. And, but this shows that uh, preventing death and improving quality of life is so critical. And uh, we know this research will go a long way. Premier, how do you allocate that money? Uh, well, obviously, this we have an advisory body that will determine which researchers will receive what amount of money, but we also appreciate that there's fantastic collaboration in this area. Researchers that are support each other, our advisory body will give us advice on that, uh, and of course, ensure that those money that the money is gone to where it's needed most. Uh, critically, the initial sixty million dollars will be allocated over the next four years, and beyond that, obviously, we've got one fifty million across the whole decade. Um, and also it's going to be used for, for trials as well, so it goes to research but also then trials. Of course, research and trials. And in the case of John, one of the other patients we spoke to today, uh, his, his doctor, his physician actually tr did a different method rather than protecting people and not subjecting the body to stress, um, his doctor said we have to subject your body to stress and, and that research now means that uh, being fit, encouraging fitness for someone who was born with literally half a heart has improved his quality of life and his outcome and so that wouldn't have been possible without the research of the doctor um, having that uh, ability to think outside the box and so we want those innovative researchers to be able to do what they do best to not only have trials but obviously crack those codes, those genetic codes in particular which are causing unfortunately too much tragedy in our community. Can I ask on um, the trucking trial that your uh, mm -hmm. government's rolling out, um, what, what do you hope you'll, you'll achieve with this technology? Well, first and foremost, safety, but also better traffic flows. Uh, smart technology and using it in traffic uh, is important. Uh, we're a government that wants to make sure we're using technology wherever we can, and this trial is really critical because it, it will improve safety. It will also uh, reduce congestion, and it's one thing we're trialling on our roads to improve conditions. And it's going to, you know, trucks is a big problem. Um, building North Connects to get trucks off, yeah. off the road. So, yeah, do you see trucks as a... A real, a real problem for congestion and safety in, in Sydney? Oh, we do. We know that at the moment, uh, not only are we moving more freight around, but the construction activity in and around Greater Sydney has meant more trucks on the road as well, removing spoil, delivering goods to, to construction sites. We're doing everything we can to reduce that impact on the community, whether it's freight transport or whether it's construction vehicles. And if we can apply this technology to improve traffic flow, improve safety, that's a positive. But of course, when we do finish those motorways, a lot of those trucks that are currently above the ground will go in tunnel and uh, that will also assist. Um, how concerned are you about the, the boat that's floating sort of off DY with the, with the cargo? You know, do you, do you, is the, has the blame game started? Do you, you know what? I haven't received much info about that, um, Ashley, but obviously um, uh, we want, we always monitor anything which could impact environmental and safety issues. Uh, what is the government doing in response to the PFAS that's been discovered in two creeks in the Hunter? Uh, I'll have to take that on notice. Um, go on, sorry. Sorry, I'm going to the Health Minister. Yeah. Go for it. Health Minister, can I ask you um, about the, the trial for <laughs> ADHD drugs for, for potential ICE users? Do, do you think that's a, a good trial? Um, clearly, uh, ICE is one of the biggest uh, scourges in Australian society, and uh, the clinician researchers are saying that there are some real benefits from trialling the ADHD drugs, and if we can make a difference, then it's well worth the trial. Are you concerned about potential side effects? Um, obviously, clinicians uh, uh, weigh up the, the various side effects when they're, when they're looking at these research topics, but I think at this stage the advice is that it's worth the trials, and it's certainly something the government is supporting, even with all that noise behind us. <laughs> yeah, you're under. Is there any way we could talk to sure. just a quick word from John? John, yeah. would you like to say something about Just like you're talking about. Uh, uh, easy. Yeah. Come on over just here. Come on over John, just quickly, um, first up. Can you tell us your situation, your condition? Um, I was born with a congenital heart defect, um, which uh, limited um, my capability through life. Um, I had surgery in my 20s, um, but even post-surgical, um, I was treated very much like I was in cotton wool. Uh, and that was the exciting bit about the research that was done um, here, actually, at RPA uh, in New South Wales. Um, that really shook the world up and actually they discovered that um, if we actually stressed um, people and, and gave them weight training um, who had conditions like mine, um, then they could live pretty much normal lives, which I do. Um, 
So uh, it's, it's been pretty transformative. Uh, it's, it's made a massive difference. So you're a benefit of uh, research when you hear this kind of money being talked about. What do you it's think? incredibly exciting. Um, you know, I'm just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many different variations of me throughout society. And, and we carry invisible um, uh, defects, if you like, um, in our health. And these are the kind of things that the research can just make a huge impact on people's lives. Um, so rather than living a, a fairly um, constrained life, you actually get out and you live life normally. It, it's, it's just incredible. Um, you know, I play drums in a band, I do all those kind of cool things now. I have a normal life. Because of research? Uh, it's contributed significantly to that. Um, obviously I've got to keep time in the band as well, so I'll take credit for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, could you set us up, Liz? What, what's your condition? So I have a condition called <clears throat> hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. A little bit nervous, and I'm glad there's a lot of cardiologists around. But it's okay, you've got the defects. So, um, my, our, it's a family story, to be perfectly honest. My sister was the first in our family. She um, collapsed in 1990, uh, and she was actually the first woman in the world to be defibrillated pregnant. And thankfully, mm. her child survived as well through fantastic work. Uh, at that point, they thought it was isolated. Um, obviously, no research had been done. At, um, we hadn't come across uh, Professor Chris Emsarian. And then, sadly, in 1999, my brother passed away suddenly. Um, basically gave his one-year-old to his wife to breastfeed in the morning, made her a cup of tea, um, gave her a piece of toast, and went out for a morning jog and just didn't come home. Um, and I personally remember looking at him in the hospital um, and thinking, how can they transplant Fiona Coop? We all know Fiona Coop. How can that happen and they not know that this is going to happen to this young, very fit man? And I was, our family were devastated. Um, we were all tested post that. Uh, and I was actually cleared because there was no genetic testing at that time. So I was cleared. One of my brothers had the typical um, thickening that comes in the left ventricle with this condition. He was advised to get a defibrillator. So he had his ICD put in and then in 2004 I collapsed at home. Uh, I thankfully had a partner there who was able to assist. And um, it was actually two weeks prior to an appointment that I had with Dr. Samsarian because my father had done a lot of research and found this doctor who was looking into the deaths of young people. So very thankfully, um, I was moved, transferred to RPA and I met Chris. And I remember thinking, you know, I've just fainted. You guys are all fussing and I've just fainted. And uh, Professor Samsarian said, no, I think there's something, wrong. I think there's a gene in this family and we need to, we need to protect you. And so they gave me an ICD and as a young, woman in her just early 30s, um, that was a very big thing for me to handle. And I actually didn't have another arrest uh, for five years. And then I can tell you when I had that first cardiac arrest, post having this machine in my chest, I was very, very thankful that it was there. Um, a, a cardiac arrest is very quick and it's very sudden and it's, and it's very dark very quickly. And to be able to wake up from that because of this sort of machinery is a um, privilege and uh, profound experience. I've had multiple since, um, but more importantly through the research that Professor Chris Samsarian has done, they actually found the gene in our family in 2008. Um, and this not only is unbelievable for us, it protects our family, it protects the children, our future children in our family, um, because there's no cure for this. You don't go into remission, you just can only get treatment. So to have uh, the knowledge that we can protect children um, while they're growing up is, is massive. And I do work with some international um, support networks for people with ICDs. And that is the biggest, biggest story that everybody has is I, I've got it now, I know. I'm protected, but what about this child that we don't know? What about, you know, I'm very lucky. I, I walk around the street, I look normal. 
Um, but there's a person standing next to me, I'm so sorry, there's a person standing next to me also looks naughty, normal who could collapse and have a cardiac arrest. So I think this research and money towards this research, I can't, I can't thank you enough because, um, you know, for us that means saving a life and you just cannot put, you can't put a price on the life of a child, a parent, a sibling or a friend. You just can't put money on that. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could, could I ask, I mean, Chris or, or Rosemary, or perhaps both, Chris and Rosemary, I mean, the two of our doctors here, both cardiologists, would you like to just say a few words about just what what the research money might do for research generally? You know, I think the research is incredibly important. Without research, we have no answers to any of these hard problems. So research provides answers. And I think this injection of money is, is, a, is a, an amazing amount of money by the New South Wales government. And I really want to just say thank you, not only on behalf of the cardiovascular researchers, but actually the biggest beneficiaries of this announcement today will be our patients. Our patients will have better health outcomes, they'll live longer, they'll have less pain and suffering, and there's some really exciting things happening. Talking about genetic diseases, and, and uh, Liz said there's no cure for these diseases. We now have technologies to try and genome edit uh, so that we can actually correct genetic abnormalities and cure disease. And this sort of funding will facilitate all those processes. So it will facilitate research, but also will facilitate the amazing number of early career researchers. There are a number of amazingly talented young people, much younger than me, and Rachel, well, Rachel's still young, but uh, much younger than me, and these guys are wonderful assets to our communities, and I think this sort of funding will not only support projects and research, but will support people and young people who uh, would otherwise be lost without this sort of funding. So I think on behalf of everyone, but particularly our patients, I'd like to thank um, the Premier and her team. Uh, because they are the beneficiaries. It's not about us, it's not about Rachel, it's about our patients and getting better outcomes and improving their lives. Doctor, just while there, just on, on that point, how much of an issue is is retaining researchers here in New South Wales, here in Australia, given obviously in the US, in Europe, there's a lot of funding around and a lot of competition. How important is it is keeping people here and how much of an issue is that? It's a, it's a massive issue. The, the issue of trying to keep talented people here is really tough. When you don't have funding, they'll get offers all around the world. In Harvard, in Cambridge, in Oxford, all those places have money available to bring the brightest there. Now we have an opportunity to bring the brightest people and keep the brightest people in the state of New South Wales. And so I think it's a, it's a wonderful initiative to, to bring back those people and keep those important people. Uh, research is all about you know, having the correct researchers, having the right research questions. But you can have all of that but not have the funding. And I think the funding initiative today is going to be a major improvement to everyone here in this room in terms of improving their lives, their families, their children, their grandchildren. Thanks, and Rachel, she was telling me she was pregnant with twins when she was getting John into the gym. <laughs> so, and she was uh, doing a very good job. Would you like to just say a few words, Rachel, about it? Uh, I mean, I couldn't possibly say it any better than what Chris just said. But, um, I mean, it's such a privilege and an honour to have the opportunity to um, you see patients and you know how you could improve their health outcomes but you don't have the resources to do it and you know what research might help um, and now we're getting the chance to put those ideas together and, and that's wonderful because it's absolutely demoralising when you see the need for something but you can't provide it. So thank you very much. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Professor Graham Kahn. What does it mean to you, this money? Look, I think it means all the things that Chris said to you, but I think it also means a lot for the people of New South Wales, not just in terms of saving lives, but we'll be able to leverage this money by bringing more money in from federal funding, from the MRFF, from the Innovation Fund, and it'll more than pay for itself uh, as we go forward. So I think it's an investment in the future, and uh, it'll, it'll boost our uh, employment, it'll boost our innovation, it'll, it'll boost our employment opportunities here in Australia, in New South Wales. And from that point of view, I think it's also a great win. And I also, on behalf of all of my colleagues uh, in the cardiovascular research community, want to thank the government for this support. We really think it's magnificent and it's going to make a big difference. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, you were great. <laughs> you were great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.